the ladder match yes. between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. What did you think about this? I had never seen so many times where I thought a man was genuinely going to break his neck. <laughs> <laughs> I know the ladder's not very big, but even when they're hitting each other with it, it's still a fucking you are, ladder, isn't you it? Are, you got to come to that match in the same way that people who watched it at the time did. <laughs> and that match was a groundbreaking, revolutionary match. We had never seen anything like it at right, all. Right, okay. Absolutely there's, astonishing. There's a moment where it's Michaels, who comes on with the best spectacles I've ever seen in my life, with sniper <laughs> yeah. sights, iron sights, in one of the eyepieces, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, they're on top of the ladder, or oh, he's on top of the ladder, he gets pushed off, and he lands balls first onto the ropes. Yeah. And then, I think later, I don't know whether it's in that move or that, because it goes on quite, it's quite a long match, but it it's is. still very good. It is, He yeah. manages, the way that he lands to get his leg caught in the rope without me noticing that he's done it. Yeah. Do you know is what? incredible. That's how the match ends. Yes, He yeah, gets yeah. his foot caught. Sorry, have I ruined it for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> By announcing a result. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the bit about that, which is really astonishing, is mm. I watched that back and I thought, actually, shit, he gets his leg out and then he's just flapping around. Right. But when I watched it back, he's not even doing that. Once he gets his leg out, he realises Razor's not in position to get mm. the belt and he just flawlessly gets his arm trapped between the two ropes <laughs> and then gets caught again. And it's just... Sean, you're having a shit show, mate. You are having a nightmare <laughs> with those ropes. It- When they first announced it was a ladder match, I yeah. remember this, and it was ladder matches had been around since I think the earliest ones about 1972. Okay, and they, so they came from Calgary, right? but you'd never seen it in WWF or WCW. Okay, and in about I think 92, Bret Hart, who's done some ladder matches in his career, only a couple, there's never mm. been very many. He sort of says to Vince McMahon, "I've got an idea for this ladder match, and I think it's worked in Calgary. I think it'd be really fun." So mm. he decides to do one with Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and it's recorded at a house show, and so it's available on the network, and that's the first ever. WWF match and it's between him and Shawn Michaels and again it's really long and what happens is the crowd have never seen this before mm. they don't really know what it is but by the end they're going that was the most spectacular thing I've ever seen <laughs> it's quite incredible this look at this particular move oh! beautiful slingshot it's the gimmick that you sort of go, oh, well, you know, okay, so they used it, but it would have been better if they had a normal match. Yeah. What they do with this is they have an incredible normal match. It's just that there's three people in it, and one of those people is a ladder. And it's, <laughs> it's just, I mean, at the time, no one had seen anything as extreme. And mm. people, I, I really remember this at the time. I mean, it was a five-star match in the Wrestling Observer. The right. first time I think a WWF match had had one, certainly since Steamboat and uh, Savage, yeah. if that was even a five-star match. People were just like, this is the greatest match in Wrestlemania history mm. it was just I mean no one could see how it could be topped in any way it seemed like well that's the end of wrestling well it, ju- it just effectively makes the ring way higher and yeah. way more perilous it was so thrilling I mean mm. and they used the ladder brilliantly mm. there's a school of thought that really what, what happens here is it's a star making performance for Shawn Michaels right. who is just he becomes the greatest worker in the business as a result he takes all of the damage mm. Razor does a couple of things but actually Razor Ryan has quite a relaxing time <laughs> it's just Shawn Michaels falling off, having his tightest taken off, which I'm sure is something that wasn't agreed and that he just put in for that extra bit of sizzle. Um, it's just an amazing, an amazing performance. Um, <laughs> just, just worth saying. <laughs> the Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels match. Bret Hart was always very, very annoyed about this match because right. he felt it was his idea, his family's concept, and it had been taken by the bloke he'd done it with. And this guy had done it really, really well. So no one at the end of WrestleMania 10 was talking about Brett versus Owen. No. They were all talking about the ladder match. <laughs> and so he was a bit fucked off about it. Watching this Brett versus Sean, the original one, the commentary for such an important historical match <laughs> is, of course, left up to Gorilla Monsoon and Lord Alfred Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a last minute save! Surely they're not going to wrestle in this ring with that ladder there. They certainly are. That's extremely dangerous. And Alfred, he not only, not only does he not understand at all what's going on, he is explained to it again and again by Gorilla, and it just doesn't go in. So there's a great bit where... Whose just, ladder is that? <laughs> he just says, it's, I mean, you know, if it ends in a draw, a draw cannot solve anything here. 
<laughs> and Gorilla says, no, 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 no. He said, it, it can't. It cannot end in a draw. And Alpha just goes, it cannot end in a draw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing. There's also a big bit, again, a key historical match, and it's literally action, bell to bell. And Gorilla is doing another thing where he says to Alfred, sensational Sherry, she's at ringside. Sensational Sherry, said, uh, she's actually got a big tattoo on her breast. <laughs> <laughs> and Alfred's going, goodness me. He's going, yeah, I'll, I'll show you later. She's such a beautiful young lady, though. And got a tattoo right on her breast, Alfred. How did you, did you that? see that? No, I did. It's I right there. Well, wait till we get another close up. I'll show you. I don't look at things like that. Oh. That's not what I heard. <laughs> He laughs, he giggles at the idea of her, her tattoo on her chest, which I think also isn't a real one. I think it was just, it's just like a painting. some yeah, henna. It's just, it's it's just, just a bit of, Sorry, what's going on here? <laughs> well, Who's keeping that ladder after he finished? Well, I'm so glad I've got some end. trellis. I've, I've, yeah. I've broken some trellis in my house. <laughs> I could do with a ladder. Right, okay. Are we going done. home now? <laughs> no, no, the, the bell's just rung, so that means the match has started. The bell means the end. Yes, it does as well. That's, you, 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 you're not wrong. You're not wrong. No, uh, never wrong. What? When, when, when. <laughs> he is such a talisman for me. Think about him. I would say on average six or seven times a day. Every time he mentions wrestling, I'd be crying. <laughs> He's oh, the great. God. We're going to have to buy a load of those custom figures. I know, start, I know. They're so expensive. Him. I mean, they're just needlessly expensive. Though. I'm sure we could just make some ourselves out of Play-Doh. I, I can't think there's anything funnier than at the end of your life when they say, are there any regrets going, yes, that we did didn't go on more of those pilgrimages to <laughs> Alfred Hayes' burial site. <laughs> I am going to make a Lord Alfred Hayes toy. <laughs> I'm, there's only four of them in the world, and mine's going to be the fifth. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, do you know but what? I'm going to do it. I'll show you I'm going to 3D print him. There- I want an Alfred Hayes Japanese love pillow. <laughs> Hazel. Uh, <laughs> but in, in the spirit of Alfred, it's got to be just full of like glass and syringes. <laughs> Done wrong. <laughs> oh. oh, he's fully functioning anuses like, in his armpit. <laughs> <laughs> it's an anomaly, but it's my anomaly. <laughs> It's an anemone. Um, <laughs> He's not even in this WrestleMania. How has this happened? <laughs> oh, oh, Lord oh, Alfred. Oh, but yeah, Alfred, it is not Alfred's finest moment because that's the interview he does where he goes to meet the British Bulldog's parents. Yeah. But this is, <laughs> this is everything that we love about Alfred in one otherwise key and important historical <laughs> wrestling moment. <laughs> Davy Boy Smith is a superstar all over the world, especially in this small hamlet from whence he hails them. Davy Boy Smith, your mother and father, yeah. your mother is Joyce, I Joyce. believe, and your father is Sid. Sid right? yes, Do you mind yeah. if I call you Joyce and Sid? No. no. Davy Boy, I've known for a long, long time. Just look at this fellow. How on earth did you feed him? What, as a child, tell me, what did he eat? Steak, bacon and eggs, chicken, fruit, milkshakes. He used to eat me out of house and home. In fact, every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She said, I'm glad. She said, I'm glad you're only here on tour. You're not staying here again. Because she said, it's like feeding a family of six. Really? Yeah. She said, Couldn't afford eat, it. Oh. No. Yeah. Let's take you back to WrestleMania 3. The Pontiac Silverdome, ladies and gentlemen. An indoor attendance record that still stands. Let's go back to the moment. This is really one of the first times in WWF where they begin saying, we actually have a history and yes. a heritage. Yeah. They've always been really funny about the heritage of, of the sport until this point. Mm. And then they start going, maybe it's okay to show some of the old WrestleManias and yes. celebrate it a bit. But one of the things they do really, really clearly is all of the moments they show, none of them have Hulk Hogan in. Right, okay. Hulk For that Hogan, reason. they know, is going to be brought up in this trial. Mm. And there's every chance that if he says, Vince McMahon supplied me with steroids, that Vince is going to go away. So they are distancing themselves from Hulk Hogan in yep. every conceivable way. They show a couple of tiny clips of him in a package about Yokozuna, but he's just being squashed and you barely see his face. Mm. But So all their great WrestleMania moments are non-Hulk Hogan Isn't that weird? Moments. Because he was WrestleMania for the whole thing, pretty he's, much. He's, he the, was the, he's one who... the main event in every WrestleMania. How do they hide apart him? Apart from four. Yeah. Number four. But World's largest toga party! The pop! The ceremony befitting a king and the macho man Randy Savage really enjoyed himself, but it was an afternoon of miscarriages of justice. 
those sorts of little bits <laughs> is really the first time the WWF begin curating and being the custodian of wrestling. Yes. And they begin accepting their old history in a way that they hadn't for a long, long time. Mm, they give a sense of heritage as well. Mm. And the heritage, that's become increasingly important over recent years. Things like the network, with them essentially reclaiming the history of wrestling. Yeah. I mean, I think they do a, a great job. If they hadn't been interested in the history of wrestling, and if they didn't do that, then it would have pretty much disappeared. It would be like British wrestling here. Yes. No one no is one curating knows, yeah. that. You cannot access it. It doesn't exist. It's disappearing. I reckon we could just buy... If we had, like, 40 grand, we could buy a, a huge chunk of the rights to <sighs> I, British look, wrestling. I didn't just go through boxes at Christmas. <laughs> I looked to see who owned the rights to yeah. the world of sport wrestling. Yeah. And I, I can't work it out. No. But there are definitely like archives that have been owned by people who aren't anything to do with wrestling. Yes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they're sitting in warehouses somewhere. So they bought will... Blankety Blank and also while they're exactly. wrestling, they've just bought us. Like, remember when we did... <laughs> we, <laughs> I was less of a writer than you were, but uh-huh. we were both writing on the International Sexy Lady Show yes, for yes. a American TV channel, I think. I think it was, yeah. And we'd got the rights. We'd Or the company that were, yeah. were employing us had bought the rights to Eurotrack. That's right, so they could it strip mine it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just basically just <laughs> Clay stuff out. And we also had, um, there was a Ghost Watch kind of um, thing on Zoo TV, on Nuts TV. Yes, sorry, Nuts that's TV. right. Was it called something like Naked and Frightened? Naked and Afraid. Naked and, and Afraid. Had, and oh. You might think, you see, you might be one of those people who said, I'll oh, listen to a new podcast. <laughs> Do you know what? This has got a load of reviews. People are nice about it. Let's have a look. And they'd go, mm, is wrestling a bit seedy though? Don't worry. You're it's- in safe hands. <laughs> we used to work on the International Sexy Lady Show, which featured Naked and Afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and bad Korean oh. family titty entertainment. Uh, sort of women sitting on cakes and things. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, it's not a career highlight. No. But it's but interesting it's, when it comes to the licensing of television <laughs> property. I just, oh, oh dear. I, I know someone who bought the rights to Pat Sharp's Funhouse. Right, And okay. it wasn't Pat Sharp's Funhouse. And I wasn't quite sure what that meant. But they were sort of saying, well, I own the title Funhouse. I own the concept of the twins. Yes, okay. I own and the, the game. Oh, yes, is yes, thing. yes, yes. And uh, he bought that for, I think, it was, yeah, it was a few grand. Mm. He didn't do anything with it and then he was reading a paper and it said in the paper Pat Sharp's Funhouse to return and he went oh brilliant I own the rights to that and he looked down the thing and it said the person who owns the rights he was like that's not me and so he (laughs) rang up his lawyer and said what's going on here and they said oh your rights to it expired about two weeks ago you just didn't notice and someone else has (laughs) bought them in this weird they wash up on the shore of somewhere there must be a website that does this sort of thing that must be the dark web (laughs) people buying the rights to Pat Sharp's Funhouse on the dark web because I remember when I used to have a challenge, I used to do voiceovers of them. Um, I wasn't allowed to use certain phrases when it came to bullseye. Uh-huh. I wasn't it's allowed a load to say- of fucking crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't allowed to say um, super smashing great. Mm. Nothing in this game for two in the bed. I think as well. Everybody loves a bit of bully. Certain things I wasn't allowed how to say because weird. Jim Bowen owned them. But how weird! There's been something where they've, they've sat there and Jim Bowen has said, "Right, I'm going to pay five pound for that because I want that, that one. one." And they go, "Do you want everyone loves a bit of bully?" And going. No, you let that one go. That's <laughs> just why I keep them all. That's not you transferable. Know. How strange. Yeah, it really yeah, is. But I, this is a genuine thing. One mm. is if anyone n- does have an archive or knows where archives are, mm. don't contact them. This is not an open bid. No. But I'm just interested to know where these things might be. Mm. If you're someone who owns one, just let us know because it's interesting what people are doing. I'm not mm. interested in your business affairs. <laughs> don't work for the tax. I'm just like, <laughs> I wonder tax. where all this wrestling has gone. Do you want to see your the tax? The second one is if you've won some stupid amount of money and you're like... <laughs> I'd like to buy Wrestle Me the podcast an archive. Yeah, then do also contact exactly. us exactly because that would help out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I think we should own it and then just like all these rights holders, just sit on it and then sell it on sometime at some point <laughs> in the near future. That's what people do. Uh, uh, yes. Lord Alfred, have you made repairs on the warp drive? Come on, Mooney! That last flare match smashed the main frames. I mean, we barons nearly blew. But I'm looking forward to some much better results in a wee moment or two. 